Hello YouTube, I'm John from the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. This is Comic Recap for July the 20th, 2016. Batgirl and the Birds of Prey Rebirth, written by Julie and Shauna Benson, and art by Claire Rowe. First of all, I would like to talk a little bit about Batgirl. I read Batgirl by Gail Simone, and I liked it quite a bit. It wasn't perfect, I had some problems, especially when it came to a certain vampire bit that didn't really sit well with me. And I didn't really follow over when the uh, series went into Burnside. I gave the first few issues a try, didn't, didn't love it, so I didn't keep on this. I'm also going to say that I did read Birds of Prey before, the one with uh, Poison Ivy and Black Canary and the Katana and all of that. So the first thing that hits me when I read this issue is confusion, because all of a sudden Barbara's time as Oracle is in continuity again. And this doesn't really make any sense. It breaks down continuity between books. Because all of a sudden, Batgirl and Black Canary has all this history as the Birds of Prey that happened before Flashpoint. That didn't happen in the New 52. So I, I know Rebirth happened, but that shouldn't affect their memories of this. They haven't been touched by Speed Force Wally. Anyway, the basic story is that Batgirl is beating up some thugs and finds out that there's a new player in town calling themselves Oracle. And that kind of pisses her off because she used to be Oracle now, apparently. And this new Oracle is selling information to the mob. So Batgirl goes and finds Dinah, a Black Canary, and proposes to get the old band back together and try and find this new Oracle. Dinah accepts. Also, separate to this, Helena Bertinelli is finally becoming Huntress. She was in the Grayson book that I didn't read, but she is angry and uh, murderous. And she meets Batgirl and Black Canary whilst trying to assassinate the person they're trying to interrogate. And that's pretty much the setup for this issue. I'm not 100% sure I'm gonna keep on this book. Uh, it's definitely interesting, but I don't think I'm gonna read it week to week, but I think I'm going to pick up the trade. Green Arrow number three. Story by Benjamin Percy and art and color by Juan Ferreira. The art in this book is fantastic. The art and the coloring, actually. It's it's really, really beautiful. One thing I'm going to say about this is that the, the story moves really, really fast. All the potential mystery set up in the previous issue with the uh, with the mystic symbol, that kind of gets resolved already. We already know what that means and the organization behind it. I'm not complaining about this because I don't know where this is going, but it is unusual. This issue sees Ollie breaking into the offices of Queen Industries and confronting his former friend and uh, the person running this company. Meanwhile, both John Diggle and Black Canary is hunting for this organization themselves, separately from each other. And that's pretty much it for this issue. And like I said, the art is, is great and the story has me intrigued. One thing I gotta say though, it's, it's kind of creepy, the love story between Ali and Dinah, because Technically, she's the mother of the previous Black Canary that he was married to in the pre-Flashpoint universe. And I can't forget that. Justice League number one, written by Brian Hitch and art by Tony S. Daniel. So much happens in this issue, but so very little to talk about. Basically, there's a massive global earthquake and the Justice League are all over the globe attempting to halt the destruction. In the middle of this, some of them start hearing voices about how their powers were stolen from someone else. And again, a warning about a horrible thing to come. I did not enjoy this very much. I said that the Green Arrow story moved very fast. This one is the opposite of that. Nothing really moves forward. This is basically a zero issue again. The Rebirth issue was a zero issue setting up the new status quo and now this one is doing it again. I realize that this is a new number one and the previous thing was a Rebirth issue and the actual previous issue was a Lex Luthor story, but my god, a number one shouldn't feel like it's stalling. Uh, it's not technically terrible. It's not technically bad. It's just so slow. 
Batman number three, written by Tom King and art by David Finch. We get to know a bit of backstory of the new superheroes Gotham and Gotham Girl about who they were and what made them decide to take action, but we don't yet know how they got their powers. We only know that it probably cost a lot of money. We also get some foreshadowing of the coming of the Monster Men. My guess is Gotham and Gotham Girl are kind of connected to that somehow. Maybe they are the Monster Men. Who knows? Last issue, we saw that Hugo Strange is involved, which, as I hinted in that video, wouldn't be a surprise to anyone who is in any way familiar with Batman's history. What's not so obvious is that issue indicated that he works for the government, as Amanda Waller and Sam Lane was with him. General Sam Lane, Lois Lane's dad. This issue has a similar last page reveal that I won't spoil, but it's definitely getting more confusing, but intriguing. Something that I could definitely do without is Batman talking about piss in his inner monologue. Shouldn't we all have learned this lesson from Kevin Smith? Superman number three. Story by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason and art by Jorge Jimenez. I don't even know how to talk about this issue. It deals with what happened to Superman's son in the last issue where he fell from a tree and gets a concussion so Superman and Lois takes him to the Fortress of Solitude to check him out. There. Like a raccoon in your trash can, they find the Eradicator has made his home there. Which of course, this being comics, leads to a fight. The rest of this issue deals with the backstory of this new version of the Eradicator and what he hopes to accomplish. All I'm going to say that it involves Krypton and Superman's son, because A, I don't want to spoil things, and B, I'm not 100% sure I understand the scope of it. Another thing that happens is a major spoiler, that of course, all the major news sites plastered across their front pages before I had a chance to read this issue. Thanks for that, dicks. So that was what I read this week. Did you like this video? Like, comment, then subscribe and share this video. Didn't like it? Disagree with me? Let me know in the comments. I am done for this week.